and I am going to turn the program over to Anna at Raven Run. Welcome to the Digital Raven Run. Uh, again, my name is Anna, and I am out here today to talk to you all about rocks and fossils and all things um, geology. And with me is Mr. Sam, if you want to pop around the corner and say hi, Mr. Sam. He will be our uh, photographer and, and film expert for, for this morning's program. So um, he will be on the other side of the camera, maybe popping in on occasion. Um, so we appreciate him helping us out. So if you've been to Raven Run before, you know that it's pretty cool. If you've not been before, you definitely need to come. I know that everything seems like far away when you're over a video, um, but we're actually only 15 or 20 minutes away probably from most of you. Um, so it's really not a far drive at all. You should definitely come on out, um, you know, go on some adventures, go on some of our programs. Uh, we do have plenty of programs that are open to the public where you can kind of come and learn and, um, you know, go along with a guide such as myself or Mr. Sam. Um, but you can also just come out seven days a week and go on a hike with your family by yourself. So it doesn't have to be a guided program. You can also go out and explore on your own. So definitely come on out. We are currently on our summer hours. So we open at 9 a.m. and we close at 6.30 p.m. Having said all that, um, let's get into the subject of the day. And it might come as a bit of a surprise to you, but I can actually talk about fossils for a really long time and never stop and you all will be here for the rest of the day. So I will ask Mr. Sam to kind of keep an eye on the time if possible. Um, and we'll, we'll just try to keep within our time constraints. But if you do have questions, again, um, we'll put them in the chat and, and we will get them read off and, and get them answered to the best of my abilities. I can't promise to know everything, um, but if I don't know it, I will make up a really interesting answer, hopefully. Uh, just kidding, we'll look it up and learn together. Um, so first of all, let's talk about where we're at. We are in central Kentucky, right down the road from you all. Um, and so we pretty much, when I'm talking about fossils at Raven Run, I'm talking about geology at Raven Run, I'm talking about the same thing that you all have under your feet right now. So we're very close to each other. We have the same types of fossils and the same type of bedrock. And the bedrock that we have out here is this bedrock that's right behind me that is um, clearly not in ground anymore, uh, but we have a house built out of it. So that gives us a good opportunity to see what it looks like. And if we want to scoot a little bit closer, ooh, look, friend. Let's I can scoot closer scoot to the friend. More. It's a snail if you can't see it. Um, so the bedrock of Kentucky, or at least this area of Kentucky, is uh, limestone, primarily limestone. And limestone, if you can look at this, I know we're looking at this beautiful snail, which like who would not want to look at that snail? Like, oh, gorgeous gorgeous, a beautiful snail. Um, but you can see behind the snail that the, the rock that they used to build this house, the limestone that they used to build this house, um, kind of looks like an ice cream sandwich, right? Like it has like these lines and layers in it. And if you can imagine you're building a house and you cut a big old square out of the ground and you use that to build your house, you're sort of getting like a cross section of the ground. And the reason why it looks like this, like ice cream sandwich, like layers kind of thing is limestone forms in layers. So basically how you get your limestone is, scientists think like 450 million years ago, which is so many years, like I can't even comprehend. I can't even picture that. I don't know what it looks like, but 450 million years ago, um, this limestone formed by, um, little bits of like sand and, and dirt and this mineral called calcium carbonate was floating around in the water and over time the water evaporates and you know how if you leave like a cup on your bedside table and it evaporates and there's like almost like a film inside the cup there's minerals in the water that's left behind when it evaporates so limestone can form like that over time water evaporates this is left behind in layers building up on each other it can also be um an ocean, the bottom of an ocean. So imagine that like this came off the bottom of an ocean and all of the little like sea creatures that die and like, you know, kind of get fallen apart and all the little bones and the corals and the shells eventually crunch up into tiny little pieces and layer on top of each other and the weight of the ocean water hardens um, and presses down until they form those little layers. So there's a few different ways that you can get limestone. 
Um, but one thing that you might have noticed that I said in both of those ways is that you need water. You need that water to press down on it, make those layers, press them together, be a weight. Um, or you need water to evaporate, or sometimes you need a combination of both. So this leads into our fossils. Um, the reason that we have this limestone in our area that involves so much water to make it is uh, we used to be underwater. And I'm not just talking about the last time it rained, although it, the trails do flood very badly. Uh, four, about 450 million years ago, scientists think that this entire area, so Raven Run, Jessamine County, the Jessamine County Public Library, um, was underwater. It actually looks more like the Bahamas than it does the bluegrass. So Sam, if you want to kind of give them a peek of where we're standing right now, um, you can see a beautiful field. We got some beautiful trees. We got some, you know, majestic scenery, but it surely does not look like the Bahamas. So uh, all those millions of years ago, scientists believe that it would have looked like the beach. You would not have had to go far to go to the beach. You would have had to stay right where you are. So the reason why I sort of lead with what limestone is and what this place might have looked like 450 million years ago is that that's why we have the fossils we have. The fossils that we have right now are not ones that you would see in Kentucky anymore. So let's take a quick little look at some of them. Actually, let's take a quick little look at this. Sam, I don't know if this will focus. Um, this is a picture of the 450 million year old ago Kentucky. That sentence made no sense. This is a picture of Kentucky 450 million years ago, or at least what scientists think. Obviously, we didn't have cameras. So this is someone being like, hey, I think based on the evidence, this is what it looks like. Um, so you can see there are there's water and there are a lot of animals that you probably don't recognize as being part of Kentucky um, in the current time. Now, the reason that we know what these animals look like is because they got fossilized. So hence the fossil part of geology. So most of these animals, I got my purple fossil bag. Cat and um, most of these animals look like something that you would probably find at the beach. So this one you can see um, almost looks like a shell, like a seashell. And this was one that was found at Raven Run. There's big, huge like pieces of limestone that we'll find out here on the trails that look like this. And if you look at this really closely, you can probably start to pick out that um, this entire rock, instead of really being a rock, is like a ton of little fossils. So these little creatures in here that look like a seashell, just like that last one I showed you, um, these are called brachiopods. And brachiopods look about like you would think that they looked when they were alive. They look like a clam or like an ocean shell creature. Science, that's a science term, an ocean shell creature. They look like an ocean shell creature. Um, and basically, if you can imagine this rock forming, you know, here's the ocean bottom 450 million years ago, all these little critters are falling down, little pieces of sediment are falling out of the water, and eventually the weight of the water presses on top of it until it forms this rock. And little pieces of sand and calcium carbonate and like all, the, all of that little stuff we talked about that forms limestone works its way into the remains of the animal. So it works its way into all the little nooks and crevices and pieces of the shells and the bones and whatever else is left behind and essentially turns it into a rock. So that's how fossils are formed over time. They slowly fill in with little pieces of sand and little pieces of minerals um, and they become a rock. So this is a rock, but it's a rock in the shape of like all these little creatures that, that lived here 450 million years ago. And that's what a fossil looks like. That's what a fossil is. So if you're in the Chesapeake County region of Kentucky, this is probably how you're gonna find most of your fossils. You're gonna find them in big giant um, like sheets like this. And they're just gonna be, you know, a ton of little brachiopods all stuck together like this. Um, you can find individual fossils of different things. They're all gonna be things from around the same time period, the Ordovician time period, um, 450 million years ago 
because that is the age of the limestone that is like nearest to the surface in Kentucky. So if you want to dig like way under that limestone, you might get to like older limestone with older fossils in it and different creatures. But up near the surface in this area of Kentucky, uh, we have this Ordovician limestone that has all of these little sea creatures in it. So let me show you a couple other guys that you might be lucky enough to find. Let's pull these guys against the grass, Sam, so they have a little better focusing chance. So this one, um, if you've ever seen pictures of a coral reef, this might look familiar to you. This is a piece of fossilized coral. Um, you can see if you look at a cross section of it, it's just a rock, but over time, all those little pieces of sediment were rock you know, turned it into this fossil that's shaped like the coral that it used to be. So, of course, where does coral come from? The ocean. Um, again, another creature that we would never think of finding in Kentucky, uh, but that we can find in this, this ancient limestone because of the way that the land used to look. So this is a type of coral. And the, these are relatively... Um, common. They're not as common as, as brachiopods. Most of what I find is brachiopods, but the coral can, can definitely also be um, one that you can find, you know, if you're really out there looking around. Here's another example of some coral. This one you can see is not, not quite as like big and impressive, but still really cool. This one reminds me of a sponge, like a literal sponge, like a dish sponge, not like an ocean sponge. So there's quite a few different looking corals that you can see around. Um, these are, again, some of the creatures that probably look pretty familiar to you if you've ever been to the beach. Um, they are more brachiopods. This is like the full, full brachiopod not embedded in the rock, like that big one that we saw. Um, and even though they look a lot like the uh, like clams and shellfish that you would think of finding when you go to the beach, or even like a freshwater mussel that you could find in the Kentucky River, scientists don't think that they're actually that closely related. Um, so there still are a few creatures you can find around that look similar to these these prehistoric ones, um, but they're they're really not closely related. They just kind of happen to look similar. Um, so this guy is one of the coolest fossils that you can find in this area, I think. And I will be honest with you. I would love to be like, yes, I found a hundred of these. I find them every day. Um, I find them all the time. I'm so good at it, but I've actually never found a nice full one that was not broken by myself. Um, I have a lot of ones that people have given me to use for displays out here at Raven Run, but I've never actually found a good one by myself. So this one is a little bit more unusual to come by, and it is called a trilobite. And how we talked about the brachiopods kind of looking like shellfish, kind of looking like clams. This one reminds me of a modern bug that you would find like under a, under a rock or under, um, you know, maybe in your basement or something like that. And if you can think of what bug I'm thinking of when you look at this guy, um, then go ahead and type it in the chat. We'll see if anyone is kind of on the same, the same track that I'm on. Um, but a few more clues is that this guy, this trilobite, uh, when it was scared of, you know, predators or something like that, it would actually roll into a ball. So it would look like a little armadillo, it would like curl up, um, similar to this, this modern day bug that it resembles a lot. Um, and the rest of the time when it wasn't curled up into a ball to get away from predators, it would basically be creeping along the ocean floor, picking up, um, you know, vegetation, little pieces of ocean vegetation, little pieces of, you know, stuff that had just fallen into the water that nobody else wanted to eat. Uh, so this trilobite. Um, We've got some guesses. Ooh, from the we chat. have some guesses yeah. from the chat. Someone I was about said to say. water bug and another ooh. person said cicada. Two awesome guesses. Very awesome guesses. Anything else? Think of a bug that rolls up. This bug, this guy, this trilobite rolled up to protect itself from predators. And there's one that looks very similar. 
it rolls out to protect itself. There we go, roly poly. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> So, are these guys related to modern roly polies? Eh, not very close. Um, trilobites are no longer around, uh, but they they do certainly look very similar to roly polies. And even though they live in the water, they act the same way. Roly polies crawl around on the ground and they eat, you know, little pieces of vegetation and things that no one else wanted to eat. And that's what trilobites did too. They just did it underwater. Um, as Akeda is in the tree there, he's like, I've heard my name. I don't know. It's he's very loud. I don't know if you can hear him. Um, yes, but good guesses. But yes, this these trilobites remind me a lot of modern day roly polies, and they act the same way too. So even though we don't have these creatures anymore because we have such a different landscape, um, we still have some things that that kind of look or function in the same way. So those are kind of the the some of the more common ones that you can find. Um, in Kentucky. If you found any different ones than that, um, I would love to hear about it. You know, drop it in the chat if you found any cool ones. These are some more brachiopods. Um, but most of what I do find in this area, um, again, are the brachiopods. And I usually do find them in this form. So I find them in this almost like a plate of brachiopods. Um, a really good spot to find these if you are in Jessamine County is actually if you go down to Madison County, um, some of the creeks in Madison County, Silver Creek in Madison County, you can see like huge parts of the creek bed, like giant flat rocks that are like the size of like this wall that's behind me. And the entire thing is just made up of brachiopods, which is cool. Again, our state fossil, Kentucky. Um, so. I know I just talked a whole break so that I can breathe if anybody has any questions in that interlude. I know I just talked a whole bunch and we learned like 900,000 things. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat right now. Um, there are a couple other little like limestone-ish type things that I wanted to cover while we're up here. Um, but I definitely do want to make sure that, that we have a couple minutes there at the end for questions as well. Um, so while we're walking over to check out some different limestone, I think if you have any questions and go ahead and drop them in the chat and we will endeavor to get them answered. No promises, but I'll do my best. Uh, someone asked, have you ever found a fish fossil? Ooh, no, but I would probably cry tears of joy if I found a fish fossil. The reason why I haven't found a fish fossil is that here at Raven Run, and probably where you are if you're in Chestnut County, the majority of the, the limestone that we have near the top that we can get to is from the Ordovician time period. So it's from about 450 million years ago, scientists think. Um, and 450 million years ago, most of the things that were in Kentucky were basically like this guy or these guys. Not to say they weren't cool, but we didn't really have much in the way of fish back then. We didn't really have much in the way of like mammals. Well, we didn't have any mammals. Um, we didn't really have any of the bigger organisms. We just had a lot of creepy crawlies. So a lot of the times when you find, you know, your limestone in Kentucky, um, so the majority of the fossils in that limestone is, is our, our brachiopods and our trilobites and all these little little creepy crawler ocean floor type guys. See, there was another question. Have you found any dinosaur fossils out here? No, I would, okay. I would cry if I saw a, a fish fossil. If I saw a dinosaur fossil, like, I don't even know what I would do. I don't even know I'd, what I would do if I found a dinosaur fossil. Um, sadly, no. I will admit that I have not. I would love to say that I have. Again, we really have primarily limestone from the Ordovician period. And scientists do believe that 450 million years ago, there weren't any dinosaurs yet. So we would have to have some like newer limestone in this area to have dinosaur fossils in it. However, if you go to Northern Kentucky, places like Big Bone Lick, 
Um, there are some, some places in other areas where the limestone closest to the surface is newer, like from the time period of dinosaurs, and you can see dinosaur fossils there. Here in the bluegrass in like Raven Run, um, you know, Jessamine County, where you all are at, um, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of the right limestone to have dinosaur fossils in it. Sad but true. I believe that was all the questions for right now. Sweet. So real quick, like, um, we'll go take a look at um, some more limestone and then we'll kind of wrap it up. There's one more thing I do want to tell you about limestone. So let's walk this way. So we are actually um, on the site of the uh, historic site that was built. Um, Mr. Sam, if you want to kind of pan around and give them a look at that house, it was built uh, about 240 years ago. So it's pretty old. Um, and you can see that the majority of it, they used brick for, uh, but where we were standing before that sort of light grayish colored building, um, that part of it is the kitchen and that was built using limestone. So really they had to work with what they had when they were building structures, you know, 240 years ago out here, they couldn't really go to Lowe's and be like, oh yes, yeah, some two by fours. So they, they kind of had to work with what they got. They were able to buy some brick, but the majority of what they used when they were building stone things was limestone. You'll see something about limestone that makes it to build and find fossils in sometimes. Um, so you can see when you look at the stone wall, this is a family cemetery. It's the um, Fraser Family Cemetery here at Raven Run. Very cool place, very historically interesting. But as far as fossils in geology, um, what I think is very interesting to note about it is when you look at the um, headstones and you look at the stone wall, are they in super great condition? Uh, not the best they could be in better condition. And the reason for that is because limestone, when you bring it to the surface and it's not protected by dirt, it falls apart really quickly. And really quickly for a rock is different than for a person. Like really quickly for a rock is a couple hundred years. So you can see over time, this rock wall has started to break down. The headstones are kind of worn down. Um, Limestone is what they call highly erodible. So as soon as the rain starts hitting it, it kind of starts falling apart. It starts wearing down. Um, and that can mean that it's sometimes kind of hard to find and identify fossils in rocks that have just been sitting at the surface and been like unprotected for a long time. Um, so don't get, get discouraged if you're, if you're looking for, you know, fossils out there. And it seems like everything you find is just a regular smooth rock. Um, a lot of the times you do have to look in limestone that has not been up at the surface for a tremendously long time. And the reason why, if you think about how limestone is formed and how we talk about how it just like crunches down under the water and it's all the little parts and pieces of, of you know, shells and bones and dirt and that kind of thing, and it just gets smashed down by the, the weight of the water. If you think about how it's formed, does that sound like the sturdiest way to make a rock? Not so much. So limestone is, is not the sturdiest, but it is the best to find fossils in. So limestone facts. Having said all that, I know we talked about a lot of, about a lot of things and we were 200 years ago and then we were 450 million years ago and we were kind of all over the place and we had a bunch of different species that we talked about. Um, but having said all that, does anybody have any questions, anything they would like to add in the chat? before we wrap up or just general nature questions, Raven Run questions, by all means, um, you know, come out to visit us out here at Raven Run. There's lots to see and talk about, not just fossils, although we do have some good opportunities to actually get out in nature and see some fossils in limestone. But there are other things too, if you're more interested in like deer, coyotes or that kind of thing. We'll give it one moment. I know sometimes it's hard to type quickly um, and I don't want to cut anyone off. But always remember, if you do have questions and, and you don't have time to um, answer or type them in the chat, um, then you can go ahead and just give the park a call. You can Google Raven Run. 
and, you know, maybe get your parents to help you out with finding the phone number. You can call Raven around and be like, Hey, I'm interested in coming out. Do you all have any deer? What's the best time to see deer or Hey, like what all fossils might I see if I go out there? So you can always feel free to get in contact with us, um, over the phone. If you have any questions, that's perfectly fine as well. So let us go ahead and wrap up our fossil conversation. And I will. <laughs> there we go. Yes. <laughs> turn it, turn it back over to myself. There's Mr. Sam, our, uh, our film expert for the day. So we will go ahead and sign off as, as long as everyone's good and no one has any questions and and you all know how to get a hold of us if you have any questions that you are thinking about after this program is over. Sound good? Bye. Bye.